I just spent four hours crossing a river. Water drop in. He goes back. Whoa. Okay, bit off more than I can chew. Welcome to the Vicar country. I've never been here before. And if you haven't, well, you're in for a bit of a journey because we don't know what the heck we're gonna run into. Solo vehicle, we started at 1,000 meters, we're already down to about 700 meters. It's cold, it's windy, but it's sunny. And I think I've just spotted the track that we gotta go up. I'm so happy to finally reach the Victorian high country. I've been wanting to go here for so long. But before I get too excited, I've got to air these tyres down. I'm not entirely sure what PSI to run, but I'm thinking from my experience with hills and this kind of terrain, we're going to go 25 rear, 24 front. It's fairly weighted, this troopy. We'll find out soon enough if it's good or bad. Dargo River, here we come. Just down this hill, and then we'll see if we can cross it. Little eye, our first crossing. Looks like someone's had a go recently. Footprints, tire marks, they've given up here. And that's as far as they got. The river's right there. Let's see if it's even crossable first. Oh, yeah, that's cold. Yeah, I don't want to be getting the shorts on. What's interesting is this step down here, you can see that's where I am, that's where the ledge is <laughs> and I haven't even thought about that ledge up there yet. Oh no, spare tyre hanging off the back, should be alright because we're coming in on an angle. Trying to keep the family jewels out of the water. I want to try and match the speed of the water, otherwise I'm going to get water through the back doors, they're not sealing too well. Before crossing any rivers, I'm always going to jump in and check it out. There are the odd boulders here and there, but it's nothing too serious. That tree right in the middle though, I can't remove it, but I can shorten it. The exit looks decent and I've spotted some tyre prints, which means I can actually get out from this side. Time to grab some tools and get to work. Yep, I know what you're thinking. Who comes to the Vikai country without a chainsaw? This guy, right here. I'm just gonna take this limb off here so that I've got more turning circle. Stage one, stage two next. I'm sending this log downstream for its own adventure. Stage three, building up this bank here. Track building at the exit is going to help me get over this log, but the more time I've spent moving around on the exit, the more water has come up to the surface. Look at that, jello. The more I move, the more I disturb it. Alright, I think that'll just about do it. Let's grab that troopy and see if we can get it across. So I've just checked the airbox, clean it out too. I've checked the bung underneath to make sure that's in. The reason why I'm extra concerned is because when I drop into this river crossing, I'm going in airbox side first. I'm engaging the rear locker for this. Here we go. Go first get low. Go. Drop it in. Woo! What a drop in. 
He goes back. Oh, he does not sound good on the back. Check them in when we get out. Still thirsty alive. We're going to need momentum for this next bit. Change gears in the water. I don't think the gearbox was underwater. Locker. I think we're a bit stuck. We jump out and see what's going on. I'm just spinning on something. The exit is now soup, and that's not the only problem though. There's something solid holding up the troopy. getting hung up on a leaf hanger or something. It's hard to work it out. Hopefully that'll do. I'm gonna have to back up a bit. Right, right, one more time, both lockers in. I think I'm sinking. This situation I've got myself into is much worse than I first thought. I'm going to be here for quite some time yet. I've decided winching is the best option. There's a stump directly in front of me. I'm going to try and use that one. I could put some max tracks down, but I might lose some of them to oblivion. That mud is so deep, it's like it's knee deep. Static strap around the trunk ring if we need it or maybe extinction a good reason to keep your recovery gear on the roof i might be bogged but i kind of make the most out of these situations problem solving i love it now this one a classic winch pull static rope as tree trunk protector should be a good solid stump. Pretty standard recovery coming up. We're going for a single line winch pull. Let's go. Wow. Really, really, really stuck, eh? Rear is still being dragged, so I'm gonna put some max tracks on the front because I know they're not gonna get buried, and then it'll assist the winch pulling it out. That one there is likely to get dragged right into the ground, so just doing that so I can retrieve it a bit easier. Winching in bursts of 20 seconds is my general rule of thumb, especially under these high loads. It allows the car battery to keep up and helps prevent the winch from burning out, and that's something we don't want. Let's give things a break just for a second, have another look. Doing this recovery solo is quite challenging, getting in and out of the vehicle constantly to adjust the tracks and checking on the winch. If I keep winching and I'm hung up on something, something's going to break. Recovery is at a point where a single line pull is not enough. I'm dragging the whole vehicle through the mud. Time to do what I should have done at the beginning. We have resort to a double line pull. This will now give us almost double the force, double the power at half the speed. Should hopefully pull us out. Let's do this. Inch by inch, the troopy is moving forward, but it's slow going. Two max tracks gone to oblivion. Oh my god, how much am I plowing here? 
Uh, it's not going to be fun to clean later. You can't do that with a long handle shovel. Well, I can just get forward by about a metre. I'm out. Oh. I reckon we've been here for like three hours now. <sighs> Can't believe I'm not out yet. This exit is very deceiving. I've been here for ages. This is possibly the longest solo recovery I've ever done. I mean, it's just one vehicle. I'm right there. I can see the stump. Look how far I've winched myself. More than the car length. Haha! <laughs> Finally out! That was a massive effort. Oh, what? It's into the bank. Well, this one's got a story to tell. We'll nickname him Crooked. Worst thing about these is cleaning them. Probably better clean myself too. I just spent four hours crossing a river. So we're just driving up the track and I saw these two lizards sunbaking. I'm not sure what type they are. If anyone could tell me, that would be awesome. She's reflexes on them. Oh wow. That is epic. <laughs> One thing for sure, I'm going to get a lot of photos in this region. If you want to get some killer shots, you want to hang on your wall, you got a DSLR, or even your iPhone or your Android, slow the shutter speed, brace against your vehicle, and then just take the shots. Slow motion, you slow that water down. Check that out. Oh yeah. Work it. Yeah. I'm pretty tired after that four hours, but hey, I'm sitting in the vehicle now. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. <laughs> what do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Still no idea. But I do have a rough idea that we just came past a deer hunting shack, I'm pretty sure. Looked like they had dog kennels and looked like a pretty good setup actually. Anyway, I think we're about to climb something dangerous because it says danger. Let's check it out. Danger, danger. Danger. Well, I guess that's why it's good to put my glasses on because mine shafts, <laughs> not hill climbs. Although, we're about to do one right here. This is super cool. Seen a waterfall, got some killer photos, and now we're about to do a pretty decent climb. Always park it in gear. Especially if it's a Land Cruiser. All right, let's go for a look. Pretty steep, eh? The cruise is tiny down there. There's a few little sections there, but this isn't like a diff lock a hill or anything. More of a point and shoot, I think. Okay, bit off more knock and chew. Looks like a first gear low and I'll put the locker in. My overconfidence has just caught me out. Second gear low for this hill, what was I thinking? This could have easily got me into a difficult situation and being a solo vehicle, I've really got to be more calculated moving forward. Point and shoot, she'll be right. Eat your words, first gear low it is. Committed to the rock and roll side. Here comes the gnarly bit. Concentration face is on. Going. Pretty epic. So now for the rest of this epic climb and 
don't know. We'll see if it's easier than that or if it gets worse. This steep terrain keeps you on your toes. And you gotta be. That view is so epic and it distracts you constantly. I'll tell you what, it's very difficult to focus on the track because you've got the mountain range over there, you got just all these like dead trees in the middle here just making all these wicked shapes. It is so cool. It's been a while since I've been on a long flat straight like this. Fourth gear low. Haven't been there all day. And soon we'll be going down on the other side, expecting another river to have to cross, which would be great to do in daylight, not particularly in the dark if it's going to be anything like the one we just did. Heading deeper into the Victorian high country in more ways than one. Not knowing the area, it feels very isolated. That's one heck of a steep descent. Yeah, really steep. All right, we're on this crossing. It looks pretty gnarly on the other side. It's like a sheer rise. I'm gonna stick to the right hand side. Locking the front and rear. Everything's falling down on me. All right. Go you troopy. It's been a huge day and I'm ready for camp. In darkness, we find camp yet again. Looking forward to a warm fire and a nice meal. The tracks we did today, I have no idea what they're called. And that's my first taste of the Vic High Country. So who knows what tomorrow has in store because I'm actually seeking out some of those well-known tracks. One of them is Billy Goat Bluff and the other one is the Crooked River Track or something like that. And if it's anything like the two crossings we've done already, man, I think we're in for a banger. I hope you guys enjoyed the ride. I certainly did. I'll see you in the morning, eh?